what a day! What a lovely day! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be doing my very first unzipping. Yep, that's right. It's just like an unboxing, except when the knife comes in a pouch with a zipper, doesn't get unboxed, gets unzipped. See what I did there? I know, I'm terribly clever. What we're going to be taking a look at today is something um, that you currently cannot get. You can pre-order, you can purchase, but you're going to have to wait for it to get made because what I have in this pouch is a prototype and it's from a designer that you're probably not familiar with yet. Let's go ahead and get this unzipped and get ready to whip it out. Now, what we're looking at here is the Mr. Mr. Designs Ronin. Mr. Mr. Designs is probably a designer, a brand that you haven't heard of before. Uh, his name is Mihai, and he's 22 years old with a degree in design. And he was a knife collector that decided, hey, I want to try my hand, since I know how to design things, at designing a knife and kind of make a really nice, small, all-around EDC-style knife. So that's what he's chosen to do here. This is his logo here, as you can see on the card. And I'm sure you can scan that for... I don't know, uh, free Frosty at Wendy's or a discount at uh, Costco. I don't, I don't know what that is. I'm pretty sure it takes you to his website. Now, let's take a look at his prototype here and see what this is all about. Now, the first thing I want you to do is just focus on the shape of the handle. I know it's kind of banana-like. But the thing that I think most people are going to take away from this video is the fact that this is so comfortable in the hand. You'll notice that it is a titanium integral. So instead of having a standard sandwich style construction where you have your front side, your back spacer, and your back side, this is all one piece of titanium. Now that's not something entirely new. It's not even something entirely new for my channel. However, this, I'm really trying to think because I don't want to misspeak, but if I'm not mistaken, this might be the least expensive titanium integral that I have ever shown. If it's not, it's within probably 20 bucks. So it is certainly one of the most affordable that I've ever shown. Now you're also going to notice it doesn't have a flipper tab. It's a front flipper or a top flipper as a lot of people will call it. Um, and you already know that I absolutely hate front flippers, top flippers, all that stuff. I don't like using my thumb. I don't like having to take the knife out of my grip and move it or shift it or do anything where I have to manipulate it in some weird way. However, the design was so different and so unique, I did want to check it out. So it was actually brought to my attention by my buddy Lefty EDC. Go check out his YouTube channel. He's like, you really should check this thing out. And he showed me a picture. I'm like, eh, not my style. He's like, I know. He goes, but there's a lot of things about it that I didn't like when I saw it in pictures. However, when I got it in my hand, I fell in love with it. He goes, I liked it so much that I actually backed his Kickstarter. And yes, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. That's how this pre-order is going to happen is on Kickstarter. Kev is a notoriously cheap mofo. So for him to lay out money, months in advance. It definitely sung to him and he definitely liked it. Here's the thing with Kickstarter. 
if you invest in a project on Kickstarter and it doesn't come to fruition, they don't get enough backers, whatever it is, they don't take any money from you. You're pledging the money and that money will only get taken out of your account when they've met their target goal. When they've reached that goal, you're sent a message, hey, we're going to take money out, boom, and then the money that you pledged comes out. If he doesn't get the minimum number of backers, which I think was 150 backers, then you're not losing any money. It's no big deal. However, if he does reach the 150 backers, you get a knife that only a handful of people are going to have right now. And that's kind of a neat thing. So what I would say is if you like what you see in this video as we go through this, um, stop the video, pause the video, whatever, and go down into the description of the video. And I have a link there directly that goes directly to his uh, Kickstarter. So if that's what you're into, take a good look at that. Then it might be worth your time just to stop for a second and make that investment. Really like that stone wash, by the way. All right, let's put this back where it was. Get our camera back where it was. And let's talk about the knife. First off, You've got a, uh, an overall length boom, of 7.2 inches, which is 182 millimeters. Blade length of only 3 inches. So that means there are very few restrictions. Depending on where you live, you may have restrictions on blade length. Very few restrictions on a 3-inch blade. That's 76.2 millimeters. You've got 3. Now, there'd be 3.1 inch blade length with a 3 inch cutting edge. Blade thickness is 15 thousandths, so it's not very, very thick. You only have one style of carry for the clip, and that is right handed tip up, the way that everything should be. Blade steel is M390. He's listing it as 60 plus Rockwell hardness. Not a fan of that. You got to be more specific. Is it 60 or is it 60 to 61 or is it 59 to 60? It really does make a difference. So I'm hoping um, as he goes into production and as he makes updates on his Instagram that he will update that and give you the clarification on that. But if, it's, if it is 60, that's, that's really good for M390. That's pretty much where you want to be. And there's going to be a few different finishes. Uh, be blasted, tumbled, or uh, they're going to be doing some sort of coated blades uh, that I'm not sure I understand what they are just yet. Now, with the specs out of the way, I know you really can't access it like that, even though I wanted to try it. It is snappy. It's got a good detent. You guys know me. I am not a front flipper slash top flipper, so I usually suck at it. So for me to be able to get it to snap out there, then you know it's really, really good. All right, let's get this out here. I'm going to do some comparisons in size for you. Um, up against the Jaeger M from Brian Brown Knives. Very close in size. Only a teeny tiny little bit shorter. I know with this... This canted angle of the camera, it kind of looks like this is identical. It's not. The Brian Brown is just a touch, just a touch longer. Get that out of there. Uh, let's show you against some other small knives. Put it up against the EMP EDC Nimble. And as you see, it's a little bit bigger than the Nimble. And I think the Nimble is a great size for a small EDC. One of my favorite knives. Vero Engineering Synapse Mini. I just changed my scales last night. You guys have seen the uh, marble carbon fiber on there. Just switched over to the red G10. Really dig that new look. This is a good bit larger than the Synapse Mini. It's going to be right around the same size as a Synapse and a little bit smaller than a Synapse XL. Get that out of there. And last but not least, the Winter Blade Factor which is another very small, compact little knife. And uh, it is actually a little, whoop, get in there. 
just a teeny tiny touch larger than the factor. All right, so all that out of the way, let's check out the weight. Four point six ounces, a little heavier than I thought it was going to be. But again, it is an integral. It is a well, it is one solid chunk of titanium. So what was that again? Four point six. So only a little bit more than the Jaeger M. Heavier than the EMP. Nimble. A lot heavier than the Vero. All right, so. You're going to have a pretty solid little knife. It feels solid. I, and honestly, it feels solid in the hand. Let's get to some pros and cons to get that out of the way because I know you guys are, are looking for that really, really quick. Pros, I love the fact that there is an inlay set up in this design. And the reason why I like that, it's on both sides, by the way, is this is going to give you some great options for the future. Right now, it's just all plain uh, this particular variation here is all uh, bead blasted and tumbled titanium with the bronze pivot collar. This is going to give you some cool options for carbon fiber inlays and mokutai inlays and damasteel inlays and whatever else he decides to come up with. So I see a, a good future for it if this is a successful campaign for him. Feels really, really good in the hand. Everything is rounded. When I looked at it at first, I'm like, it's a little too rounded. I, I like having some sharp definition, but having gentle edges. I'm like, uh, it's kind of blobular, and I'm not sure if I'm into that. Then I really did start liking that. And then I wasn't sure that I liked the Tanto tip, because everything else on this frame is very fluid, very organic, very rounded, then all of a sudden you have the straight to upswept spine and you have these uh, very, very sharply defined bevel lines. You have that uh, Americanized Tanto style tip. And I'm like, it, it almost looked, and it still does, I'll be perfectly honest, it looks to me like this blade was just thrown into that handle at that handle had something more along the lines of that blade shape in it. And they took that blade out and put a Tanto style blade in there and called it a day. It looks like two different knives to me. The more I've played with it, the more I've gotten over that. I think especially because once it's in your hand, you don't see the shape of the handle and you're like, oh, I really like that blade. I like uh, the compound grind. I like how the uh, everything is, is shaped on there. And I like the crown spine. It's a really, really high-end touch that you don't see on a lot of knives in this price range, which we'll be discussing the price in a moment. I like how soft the action is. Boy, I really, I want to be able to do that, but you can't. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, guys, for me to be able to front or top flip it uh, that easily, you know the action is really, really good. So I was a little concerned about the visual design balance. And the more I held it, the more I started liking it. And Kevin warned me that that was going to happen. The other thing I like about having the scales on here or the inlays is that this acts almost like a, uh, a frame lock, even, I'm sorry, almost like a liner lock because it prevents the lock from going any further. So you have your over travel for your lock bar built in because of that inlay. Very slick, very cool. Um, the clip looks good because it, it flows with the design of the frame. The problem is I feel it. And it's not a hot spot, it's not sharp, but I feel it just holding the knife. If I was really bearing down on it like I was cutting cardboard for a half hour or something, that would start to irritate me. This really should be convexed and the edges knocked off. That's something that I would very highly suggest uh, to Mihai as he goes into production. Don't make this flat, make it convex, and then, man, two seconds on a scotch bright wheel will take that harsh edge off there, and then it's going to feel great. As far as the function of the clip, works well in and out of the pocket. I like that. Everything's great as far as that goes. 
They've done a great job on the action. Oh, yeah. It's smaller than I typically like. I know it's hard to understand because one of my favorite knives is this Vero. But the, I, I carry this on very, very specific days when I'm dressed in a very specific way. And that's generally summertime here in Texas. Like for the past, what, nine days, we've been over 100 degrees, 105 to 109. Um, yeah, man, I'm wearing lightweight shorts. I'm not wearing jeans and stuff. So I want something smaller and lightweight in my pocket. And that's where that style of knife really works best for me. This one, having that little bit of extra weight, it might not be that perfect small lightweight carry. But if you do prefer smaller knives, regardless of weight, I think that you're going to really, really like this. I wish two things. I wish the oval that was cut into the blade was a little bit larger and there was a little more relief because it is really hard. There's no way, almost no way to get your fingernail into there. But even trying to jam your fingertip into it to flick it is difficult. So I wish there was a little bit more relief or the blade was a little bit taller with a larger opening and you could get to it a lot more easily. Same thing for the thumb. It's okay for the slow rolling because you can really dig your... Th oh, no, I say that and now I'm experiencing a little bit of an issue. So yeah, I wish there was a little more room because right now, I mean, what's big right now is multiple methods of deployment. People want to have multiple access points. I'm not saying everybody does, but uh, it's extraordinarily popular right now. Having a knife that you can open in a variety of ways is extremely popular. So if we could have had a better option there for, th for thumb flicking, for finger flicking, for slow rolling, in addition to this top flipper, I think it would have been a better overall idea. Um, or at least having a flipper tab. And I'm, I am disappointed that there isn't going to be a standard flipper tab in addition to having the top flipper. I really wish it did. Uh, the jimping needs to be a little tiny bit sharper. They did a great job on, <clears throat> on crowning the spine. But when you crown the spine, number one, you're taking the very edges off of the jimping. But they're also going to be going over this a few times to clean up the finish. And that makes the jimping a little bit too soft. It needs to be a little bit more bitey or... If they used a wire EDM and they undercut it, where it's almost like serrations. And I don't want to say serrations because I don't want you to think that I wanted to cut up your fingers. But uh, if you look at the way that it is here, you see that all the cuts are straight and, and they've uh, got a nice crown to it. With an EDM, they could actually undercut it kind of in this direction. So that when you go to engage, even if they just did it back here, when you go to engage this, it would literally grab your skin and make it a lot easier. So I guess I do have a couple of suggestions uh, for this knife. And uh, it's not too late to make those changes. And if you guys agree with the changes that I'm, I'm suggesting, uh, please do put that down below because he's going to need all the advice he can get. This is his very first knife. What I'm doing right now, because I know this is a prototype and it probably hasn't been played with a lot, I want to see how the lock migrates and I want to see where it's locking up. And that is a good, solid lockup. It's early enough to be considered early without it looking weak at all. I would say it's about 20% lockup. So, yeah, uh, I think they did a great job on that. I would have probably gone with flat, flat face pivot because you have a slab-sided frame. Would have been nice if that was just all completely flat. Yeah, great, great example, just like the Jaeger. This is one of my favorite designs, and one of the reasons I truly love it is that completely flat pivot. That's a really great way to go when you have a slab-sided design. The uh, Nimble is this actually, oh my God, every knife that I have sitting out here 
<laughs> it's, it's actually done like that. I didn't realize how many knives I had that had flat pivots because it's uh, not a, a very common thing yet. But uh, yeah, so that's my thing. Um, did a good job as far as the blade size in relation to the handle. He's given you just enough size so the handle, even though it's a little blade, fits in the hand very, very well. Like I said, it's a very comfortable frame. Making that little adjustment on the clip would be good. And then it'll fit perfect. Another thing, um, and this is not a knock against Mr. Mister. This is 90% of all knives on the market in the tactical category where they put jimping. They forget that you're not holding the knife like this. That a lot of the cutting you're going to do is like this. The jimping really should be further forward, or uh, it could still be back here. It has to be for the, for the top flipper. Um, but extend it up further, I think, would be a, a much, much better idea. I would say stop right about there, so it's not interrupting the flow of the plunges for the top swedge. So you give it a little bit of room and stop it right there, and you have a good purchase on the blade. Um, but again, that's just a personal thing. Every designer is going to do something a little bit different, and they have to. They have to make their stuff unique to them. I'm not sure who the OEM is on this. He had talked to me about who he initially went to, and they weren't able to do it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, he did. Okay, great, 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 great. Okay, my apologies. Um, he had told me a story about he had initially gone to Riyadh, and he had been rejected. But after some, I'm sure, sweet talking, he did get David to agree to it. So that's why you're getting the action that you're getting. That's why you're getting the high-end finishes, the high-end level of quality of these basic finishes, I should say. That's why you're getting the quality you're getting, because it's going to be a react built knife if it comes to reality. And maybe that's why it's so easy for me to flip it open. All right, so yeah, if I could flip it that easily, you know you're in good shape. So here's the deal. If you back the Kickstarter, you're in it for 365. 365 to 370. Like I said, if it's not the most inexpensive, it is one of the most inexpensive titanium integral frame locks I have ever brought out onto my channel, period. At that price, it can't be beat. I mean, just to give you some comparison, that's more expensive. That's more expensive. That's only a couple bucks less. That's more expensive. And none of those are titanium integrals. So keep that in mind. You're getting into a much more expensive way of manufacturing. And you're not spending a ton of money for that benefit. Another thing that I like is that everything looks clean. He's got his maker's mark right there. And it's pretty small. And then you had the blade marking right down there. That's it. There's nothing else on it. And when the knife is closed, all you see is the blade marking. Well, I guess you could still see the, the maker's mark a little bit. But it looks very, very clean. And I dig that a lot. Boy, this almost feels like holding a jelly bean. It's just, it's so soft in the hand. So well-rounded. Yeah, see what I mean? It just, I really wish the jimping was a little bit stronger. Anyway, that's my thoughts on it. It's not something, I, I'm not sure that it's something I'm going to own personally. I'll be honest with you, the more I played with it, the more it's grown on me, but I don't know if it's like, wow, gotta have it. But I know that this compound style Americanized Tanto is, is going to definitely sing to a lot of people. The top flipper is going to sing to a lot of people. The integral nature is going to sing to a lot of people. The really fantastic ergonomics will sing to most people. Having the inlay into the integral frame, which may in the future give you different options, may or may not, don't know, but you could certainly unscrew this, pop that out, anodize it, or satin finish it, or do various things yourself, or send it off to a knife modder and do it. If there are no options made in the future, this will be a knife that's going to be actually really, really easy to customize yourself. 
So I see it as a winner for a lot of people. I think it's going to have to grow on me just a little bit more. And I tell you right now, if this was 100% all blacked out, I think that might have pushed me even further into loving it. And that may be an option in the future. I don't know. So, yeah, it's kind of cool, man. But it's definitely comfortable. He focused on ergonomics, and that is extraordinarily important. Good blade steel, good construction all the way around, made by Riat. You know, you, uh, you, you can't miss out. And for 365 to 370 depending on the finish, yeah, I think it's a pretty solid deal. Definitely is. So that's my thoughts on it. If you guys have any questions, uh, please put them down below. I'll make sure that uh, Mr. Mr. Mihai uh, checks in at least periodically so that he can come in and answer your questions. And that's it for me right now, guys. Thank you so much for joining me as always, and I'll see you on the next video.